I want to tell you about a 23-year-old woman who was brought into an emergency room at a Chicago hospital. This is from Caffeine, Watch Out for Energy Drinks, in a 2008 article from Child Health Alert. She was brought in with a racing heart and chest tightness, and she had no previous problems with her heart. Yet her heart rate was dangerously high, said doctors, and fortunately they were able to treat her with medication and save her life. What was the cause of this situation? It was an energy drink she had consumed called Speed Shot. Most people who drink energy drinks are not aware of the dangers. Today I will tell you about the dangers faced by consumers of energy drinks and offer a simple way you can help increase awareness of those dangers. I've done extensive research on energy drinks, and as a parent and a teacher, I'm concerned about the effects these drinks are having on consumers, especially young people. I'll begin by telling you some of the dangers of drinking energy drinks. You wouldn't know it by the attractive containers that they come in, but what's inside energy drinks can be very harmful. One danger is excessive caffeine. An energy drink can have up to 500 milligrams of caffeine in one can, according to the article, Warning, you may be over-caffeinated in Health Magazine. This is far more caffeine than is found in other beverages. Taking a look at this graph, as you can see here, the maximum amount of milligrams of caffeine in soda runs about 35 milligrams. In tea, it's almost 50 milligrams. Coffee, about 150 milligrams. And energy drinks, up to 500 milligrams of caffeine. So what are the dangers of caffeine? Well, first of all, caffeine can be incredibly addictive, to quote Eric Lenkowitz in the article Impure Energy in Men's Fitness. Also, caffeine can mask other health problems, including depression. Caffeine can also cause dehydration. And there have been cases of death by caffeine toxicity, according to Riesig, Strain, and Griffiths in a 2009 article in the journal Drug and Alcohol Dependence. There are also other hazardous ingredients that are found in energy drinks. One is called guarana, and to quote Lenkowitz, it's just caffeine in a different costume. Guarana causes jitteriness and also increases heart rate. Another ingredient found in some energy drinks is taurin, and taurin can raise heart rate and blood pressure to dangerous levels. Another example comes from the energy drink Rockstar, which has 62 milligrams of sugar in just one can, according to the 2009 article, The Worst Supermarket Foods in America. That is equal to about eight Rice Krispie treats with chocolate frosting. This exceeds the daily allowance of sugar, which is 50 grams. And I learned this in an interview I conducted with Nancy Zwick, a registered dietitian and nutrition professor at Northern Kentucky University. And this excess sugar, she says, causes weight gain and tooth decay, among other things. Another ingredient found in some energy drinks is bitter orange. This is according to Michael McCarthy in the July 2009 article, Overuse of Energy Drinks Worries Health Pros. Bitter orange is very closely related to ephedra, which is a dietary supplement that was banned in 2004 after it was linked to several deaths. I also want to tell you about a survey that showed that 27% of college students who consume energy drinks con combine their energy drinks with drinking alcohol. This is according to Eric Strain in Ascribe Health Newswire. What this does is it causes the drinker to be more alert, and they oftentimes underestimate the degree to which they're drunk, which makes risky behavior more likely, including drunk driving. Also, there's research by the New National Institute on Drug Abuse, which shows that drinking energy drinks is linked to other dangerous behaviors. This is in frequent consumption of energy drink linked with risky behaviors, according to Alcoholism and Drug Abuse Weekly. Specifically, they found that people who drink energy drinks are three times more likely to smoke cigarettes, twice as likely to abuse alcohol, and also twice as likely to use marijuana. To quote Strain, energy drinks might serve as gateway products to more serious drugs of abuse. Well, now that you know how dangerous energy drinks can be, let's look at the need for them to have warning labels. Energy drinks do very little to make consumers aware of their dangers, yet they are very popular. According to Riesig, there are over 500 brands worldwide and over 100 million gallons are consumed each year, and sales of energy drinks exceed $5 billion. Now, what I want to do now is show you some of the marketing that energy drinks do. 
We're going to start with the Red Bull website where they have a number of videos. And the one that I'm going to show you is of a young man who participates in Red Bull motocross events. website for an energy drink that's actually called cocaine. And what you'll see on this website is, again, several videos. And the one I'm going to show you is of a young man who says that he's trying cocaine energy drink for the first time. He chugs the can. Tastes kind of good, he said. Here he goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, up at the top of the web page is a photo gallery of hip and good looking people who are enjoying cocaine and energy drinks. In his article, McCarthy interviewed a high school track coach who expressed her concern, saying that a lot of the young people she works with don't make a distinction between energy drinks and sports drinks, like Gatorade. It's also interesting to compare the regulation of sports drinks in the United States with other countries. In Canada, there are labels that are required that say, do not mix with alcoholic beverages. In European Union, energy drinks are required to have a warning label that says high caffeine content. In Norway, Red Bull can be sold in pharmacies only, and in Denmark, Red Bull is not allowed to be sold at all. In America, most cans of energy drinks don't even say how much caffeine is in them. To quote Rizig, regulation of energy drinks, including content labeling and health warnings, has differed across countries with among the most lax regulatory requirements in the U.S. It's also interesting to compare energy drinks to no-dose caffeine pills. No-dose caffeine pills have 200 milligrams of caffeine, according to Health Magazine, and they are required to have a warning label. Energy drinks, as I mentioned earlier, can have up to 500 milligrams of caffeine, yet a warning label is not required. Shouldn't we have warning labels on beverages that are marketed to kids and have up to two and a half times as much caffeine as a no-dose pill which is required to have a warning label? Well, scientists at Johns Hopkins University are pushing for warning labels according to strain. Their concern is that consumers don't know how much caffeine they're getting. And to quote Dr. Roland Griffiths, it's like drinking a serving of an alcoholic beverage and not knowing if it's beer or scotch. And in a statement I got in an interview with registered dietitian Nancy Zwick, she said absolutely energy drinks should be required to have warning labels. And she says the FDA, or Food and Drug Administration, has been irresponsible. And the reason they don't have labels is lobbyists from the beverage industry have successfully prevented it from happening. Well, it's time for you to be heard. Few people who drink energy drinks know what they're consuming. We've seen the dangers, and we've seen the need for warning labels and your help is needed. I'm asking you to contact the FDA or Food and Drug Administration and I've made information available to you. 
I've sent everybody an email through the course Blackboard site, and I've posted this information on my Facebook page as well. And what you'll find that it has is the email address for the Food and Drug Administration, as well as a summary of key points and a sample message that you can just copy and paste into an email you send to the FDA.